Welcome to Face the Nation. I'm Leslie Stahl. The ocean is polluted. The American coastline is scarred with shameful tubs of floating filth. And beautiful creatures like dolphins have been dying. Our industrial society has been using the ocean as a dumping ground. We're polluting our environment, and the environment is saying back to us, there's a line here beyond which you can't go. Incoming tides along the northeast coast have washed up a nauseating concoction of hospital waste, including vials of blood testing positive for AIDS. We're afraid. I don't even want to put her feet in because I'm scared of what might wash ashore. It's often been referred to as midnight dumping, where they sneak out in the middle of the night and uh, get rid of the waste that they don't know what to do with. Under the Clean Water Act, all ocean dumping was to have stopped by now. But New York City continues to dump some sewage sludge legally 106 miles off the coast. Fishermen say that toxic metals are burning holes in lobsters caught near the site. Last summer, all of a sudden there was no birds, no feed at all on the top of the ocean. And that indicates something is wrong. And then no, no tuna, then we saw a dolphin dying, humpback whales. Sperm whale, right whale, finbacks. It's sad what they're doing. Floating trash can be just as dangerous as toxic waste. Seals are found tied up in plastic ropes. Scientists estimate that two million seabirds die each year because they eat plastic or get caught in it. I just said no. <laughs> President Reagan vetoed an extension of the Clean Water Act last year, but Congress overrode his veto. Because of pollution, shellfish beds are off limits to fishermen in Galveston Bay. Parts of Puget Sound, so infected from industrial discharges, have been designated a toxic hazard site. And Boston missed a July deadline for treating human sewage that is dumped into the harbor every day. Has the Reagan administration been enforcing the environmental laws on the books? We'll ask EPA Administrator Lee Thomas and Senator Frank Lautenberg of New Jersey. And we'll hear testimony about pollution in New York, Seattle, and Houston. Man's indecency to the environment, an issue facing the nation. From CBS News, Washington, Face the Nation, with CBS News National Affairs Correspondent, Leslie Stahl. With us from New York, the city's commissioner of sanitation, Brendan Sexton. From Seattle, Donald Malins, a biochemist from the Pacific Northwest Research Foundation. And from Houston, Jim Blackburn of the Galveston Bay Foundation. Let's go to New York first and Commissioner Sexton, who I understand is in charge of the investigation into who's been dumping those medical syringes and vials of blood into the uh, waterways around the city. What have you found so far, Commissioner? We've been able so far, we've come up with uh, one minor and one major arrest. We expect another arrest within the next several days, I hope within a week. We can't be certain that we will find exactly who put which medical waste in which body of water, but we have found some people who are clearly dumping, illegally disposing of medical waste, very like what has shown up in the water. Commissioner, as I understand it, this kind of dumping is only a misdemeanor in New York. How can that be? Uh, actually, it's true almost everywhere. New Jersey is having the same problem. They just had a great case. They busted a laboratory over there uh, with 2,500 vials of blood disposed of illegally, and they're having the same trouble. We are working with the district attorneys to see if we can get some felony reckless endangerment charges and things like that. But the truth is, as gross as this crime is, there hasn't been any, the statutes haven't been written really to contemplate it. If you can find someone right That's in the That's because it's act, unfathomable, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, yeah, if you can find someone right in the If you catch them right in the act of putting something in the water, that's a federal crime, you can get pretty good time for it. But short of that, we have to show a reckless endangerment link, we have to get each vial of blood or syringe, we can get a public health law violation and so on. Now, tell me what the public danger is. You, you have a vial of blood that, mm -hmm. that's been tested positive for AIDS. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, frankly, why would anybody ever go swimming again in the ocean? Well, the truth is that the chances of getting either AIDS or hepatitis B, which we've also found antibodies in some of this material to hepatitis B, the, the, the chance of actually getting that disease from something you step on at the beach or something like that is probably very tiny. How but do you know that? Well, the doctors tell us that. It, it, the virus is not that healthy. It doesn't survive that well outside the body. But Wait. no one will tell you the odds are zero, and that's the worry. No one can tell you that there's no chance of getting the disease. All right, we're going to come back to you, Commissioner Sexton, mm -hmm. in a minute. But let's now just go out to, uh, to Seattle 
and uh, Dr. Malins, who uh, is about to tell us what the situation is in the Puget Sound area of our country. I understand you have pockets of uh, the Puget Sound that have been declared as highly toxic by the federal government. Well, that's correct, Leslie. In Puget Sound, uh, we have probably over a dozen so-called hot spots which are heavily contaminated. We also find that a number of the contaminants, which are complex suites of chemicals, are, are accumulating in our bottom-dwelling fish and thereby setting in motion the possibility of transferring these sorts of chemicals to the human consumer in some cases, particularly uh, from uh, consuming fish from the highly contaminated areas. Well, I just asked the Commissioner of New York well, why anybody would want to ever go swimming again in the oceans along his coast. Why would anybody ever want to eat fish coming from your part of the country? Well, I think that the problem that has to be recognized is primarily associated with these highly uh, polluted areas, such as parts of Commencement Bay, the Duwamish River in Seattle, and perhaps the Everett Harbor to the north. But the great uh, majority of the fish from Puget Sound, I think, is probably quite edible. And at the moment, we don't have any evidence to indicate that uh, with the bulk of the fish in Puget Sound, that there's any, uh, in any way a human health problem. Dr. Mellons, we'll come back and ask you more about what's uh, being done to clean up your area. But let's go first to Houston and Jim Blackburn, who is an environmental lawyer. Tell us about uh, your region of the country, the Galveston Bay area. The Galveston Bay area is uh, contaminated uh, with bacterial pollutants from domestic sewage. There's a tremendous waste load on the Houston Ship Channel that includes toxic pollutants, although it's quite frankly not as bad as it used to be. And uh, we're very concerned about open bay dumping of spoil by the Corps of Engineers, probably the three biggest issues in our area. Jim, I understand you brought a map. Tell us uh, that, what the map means. It's, it, go the ahead. Ma the map that, that I brought shows in white the land area around the Galveston Bay system, and in green and blue the Galveston Bay system. The green area is closed to shell fishing because of uh, bacterial contamination. That's the entire uh, coast. It's the entire <laughs> nearshore area of the Galveston Bay system, roughly 50% or about 300 square miles. And what is the red? The red are the areas that the Corps of Engineers is proposing open dumping in, and we're really concerned about this because our sediments contain toxic pollutants. Uh, we have seen our first catfish and bottom fish with tumors in the upper ends of the, uh, in the upper red area, essentially. And we're worried about the open bay impacts of this dumping. Uh, we think it's, uh, quite frankly, very stupid. Let me ask all, each of you, what you think uh, we as a society have to do from now on to reverse this trend? And let's start with you, uh, Commissioner Sexton, in New York. What, what do we have to understand about the future in terms of money and, and maybe even mindset? Well, I think the chief issue is that we have just had total disregard for our waste products, whether they were chemical waste or solid waste, garbage, medical waste, regular garbage toxic pollutants, dredge spoils. We're dealing here with the consequences of generations of America who never gave a second thought to what they threw away or where they threw it away or how they threw it away. And that will have to change. And that's a cultural, a social problem, and it will also be a financial problem. We're going to be spending a lot more money on waste in America than we ever thought before, reducing waste, controlling it, uh, cleansing it and cleaning up the disastrous consequences of irresponsible handling. Are you saying that, we, that you think we have to stop using so much, many plastic disposable containers that we're going to have to go back to paper and, and maybe cloth and glass, things that can be cleaned and washed and reused? As a matter of fact, the solid waste part of ocean pollution, as opposed to some of the bacterial or chemical problems, is very directly related to plastics. Plastics don't go away ever. It's amazing. We've created, uh, we and God have created eternity here. Uh, we're the only ones who create things that never go away ever. And we have a very serious problem in the oceans. The marine life is suffering terribly from plastics. And much of the stuff we're finding on the shores, uh, we're finding because it's, it was made of non-degradable material. It just, once it gets into the water, it's there forever until someone goes and picks it up. Dr. Malins, has the government, in your opinion, uh, done enough? Uh, what, what, what do you, what's your solution, or at least uh, the beginning of a solution? Well, I don't believe the government has done enough. I think we've had a very laid-back perspective over the last eight years with regard to many environmental problems, and that certainly includes those which we're discussing here today. 
I think, number one, we've got to recognize that the problems we're talking about are number one or, or a high priority in this nation. And once we recognize that and genuinely accept it, then I think we have to find ways of efficiently putting money into the system in order to get something moving. Mayor Koch of New York has said that the ocean is a huge bowl of disinfectants and that it's okay to put some of these uh, uh, waste products in the ocean because the ocean cleans it out. Uh, if, if I may respond to that. Yes, please. Down in, um, in, in Houston, we have found that uh, while it's true that there is an ability of uh, Galveston Bay to cleanse itself, you can overload that system. And it's the limits to the loading that we poorly understand. And it's oftentimes very easy to say that the cost of innovative treatments are too high and we'll continue to stress and press and push to the limits. And uh, we are concerned here in Galveston Bay system that we are at the limits and that we cannot push any further. It appears in New York that you've gone past your limits. That's a good point. Let me go back to the New York City uh, Commissioner of Sanitation. How come New York City is still dumping in the ocean? The law said you were supposed to stop doing that by 1981. You're talking about the treated suicide sludge that's dumped 106 miles out? Right. I think that the Congress in New York agree that that will stop someday. I also think Well, that you just say someday. It should have stopped uh, eight, seven, eight years ago. Well, it'll, it'll stop according to when Congress in, uh, agrees to pass the law that it will stop. I think that that has not been linked, at least no one I know has linked it to anything that's happening on the beaches or the shorelines. And no, that but is they have been sludge. linking it, Commissioner, they mm -hmm. have been linking it to dead fish, uh, lobsters with uh, sores uh, on a their... A couple of fishermen have linked it, but the U.S. EPA and uh, the state D.C., which is a pretty tough outfit, has not linked it to that. It is possible that it is not a good practice. That's why I think people are talking about what year it should end in rather than how long to keep it going. But if but there's one a of law... The, if I can say, one of the things we have to, have to question is what will happen to the sludge then? Will it be spread on the land? Will it be incinerated? People have to realize these are not easy issues and we have to deal with all of them in a way which doesn't then pollute the land or the air. And that's just as important as the question of the water. We have to take this as a holistic approach. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very, very much for being our guest this morning. And we will be back with the administrator of the EPA and an EPA critic. I don't see how people can be so irresponsible, you know, just, just to dump that waste into the water. And I really think something should be done about it. Joining us, Lee Thomas, Administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, and Senator Frank Lautenberg, Democrat of New Jersey and Chairman of the Senate Subcommittee for Environmental Oversight. Uh, Mr. Thomas, we'll start with you. Uh, the charge made by the critics is that under your leadership, EPA is not enforcing strongly the laws that are already on the books. And in fact, after 11 years uh, of the Clean Water Act, 13 percent of the sewage system uh, uh, plants in the United States are not meeting the requirements of the law. And that includes some of our biggest cities. Answer the charge. Are you, uh, do you feel that uh, perhaps you could do a little better in enforcing the law? Leslie, let me say first, as far as coastal pollution is concerned, it is a major, major problem. We're overwhelming the coast, our sensitive environmental systems of the coast, with people and pollution from those people. We've got nearly 70 percent of the American public living within 50 miles of the coast of the Great Lakes. So we're seeing symptoms of that. We're seeing major problems. EPA is a part of the solution. Our enforcement authorities, all of our authorities, and we're working hard to use those. But let me tell you, it's going to take a lot more than just EPA. It's going to take federal government, state government, citizens getting behind the whole effort to deal but with it. But what about the EPA? What about your job in that equation? I agree with you. That's a major part of it. As far as enforcement is concerned, we've taken hundreds of enforcement actions up and down the coast. I've taken virtually every major city on the East Coast and West, uh, West Coast into court, whether it's Boston, New York City, Los Angeles, right now well, San Diego, and gotten them on a schedule to stop dumping in the ocean. But you know, the, the, the environmental groups say there's more dumping in the ocean than ever. Leslie, I've taken industrial dumping in the ocean from 6 million tons to less than 100,000 tons in the last eight years. We've taken every city out of the ocean as far as sludge dumping is concerned, except for New York and, and uh, six New Jersey cities, Boston dumping right in the harbor, 
San it'll Diego. get out by 91. San Diego. San Diego, we've got in federal court right now. Los Angeles, we stopped last year. So we're, we're getting them out. We've still got a long way to go. All right, we'll come back and talk about that uh, some more, I hope. But let's go to New York for Senator Lautenberg. You know, you've, you've uh, written several bills uh, to improve the, the ocean situation, uh, but they're going to cost a lot of money. And the truth is that we are living in an age with a huge deficit. Uh, realistically, how are we going to afford to clean up the situation that we have? Where is the money going to come from? Leslie, <coughs> the money is not the only question. <coughs> yeah, but that's a it's, big question. Well, there's a que yes, but so, there's a question about the priorities here. We haven't seen this administration really commit itself to the environment to say this is one of our top priorities. I met with the president privately in Air Force One about a year ago and asked him specifically to respond to me on what he could do to help us with the beaches, and I've heard nothing. Lee Thomas, good soldier, just marching to the wrong drummer, has not yet use the laws that he's had, for instance, to be able to stop medical and infectious waste from being uh, dumped in the ocean. So money is a, a, a serious problem. The president continues to ask for less for sewage construction grants than uh, is available. Uh, just last week, a Republican majority, a Republican uh, group of uh, senators voted to cut back sewage funding by $150 million and uh, Superfund by $100 million, one of the senators from this region. And we haven't yet had any direction from the president. We haven't had any of the muscle that he can exert uh, to help us uh, deal with the problem. So it's a question of priorities, a question of making a commitment that says we will fund what is on the books through authorization. Right. Is it, isn't it true that in the last budget, uh, Mr. Thomas, that your administration submitted, you asked for a big cut in clean water uh, enforcement uh, programs in terms of money, 40 Leslie, percent cut in, Leslie, in funds? We've increased over the last four years ocean funding in our agency as far as personnel is concerned, 30 percent, funding 60 percent. Uh, Senator well, Lautenberg's facts, let, let me, Senator Lautenberg's facts, last week he's on the conference committee of my appropriations committee, cut my budget $200 million for toxic waste cleanup. Now you can't have it both ways. You can't cut me last week and criticize me this week for not doing enough. Senator? Uh, Lee, uh, last week we saw a unified band of Republican senators vote to a person to take $250 million off Superfund and clean water. They stuck together in unison. Yeah, one, but some Democrats the, must have gone with them to make a majority. Had, <laughs> there was one, one Democrat uh, uh, for the cut, and to put that money into space, all of the Democrats beside that voted to preserve the uh, an environmental funding that we had. But the bottom line is that the money was cut. The money, the money was cut. And How can this be? We see well, this crisis. Uh, let, let's not try to pass that ball. Lee's very good at this. What we've seen is we had a $2.4 billion authorization for clean water this year. The president asked for a billion five hundred million. Now, to me, that sounds like a pretty substantial cut, and I think it's unconscionable when we're faced with a torrent of garbage, a torrent of junk coming up on our shores. For Lee Thomas to talk about that kind of funding when he had the law in the books that permitted him to enforce the infectious waste part of the thing under RICRA, 1976. Under what? RICRA, Resource uh, Conservation Recovery Act. Mm -hmm. He had the law. Instead of sitting by and waiting for us to mandate, micromanage as they like to call it when they disagree with you in Washington, instead of asking us for specific permission if he didn't have it to go ahead and enforce that law, he sat by and waited and then applauded us for introducing it the other day in the Senate. It doesn't ring true, I'm sorry to say. Leslie, we've worked hard both using our enforcement authority as well as our funding authority to try to deal with coastal pollution. As I said, the problem is a big one. It's going to take a lot more than just us. But let me tell you, EPA, we've worked on the medical waste issue. We've got nearly every state now that has, an in, that has a medical waste management program. I have we've to worked ask you with this. New Jersey if, and New if, York. I'm afraid I'm going to run yeah. out of time if I don't ask you this. How, why does EPA permit New York City to keep dumping? Why have you allowed them to have extension after extension without keeping the pressure on them a lot of other cities met the deadline, which was 1981, and they are now asking for we, another 10-year extension. The deadline actually was 1977. We took New York City to court. Well, first, we took New York City and said, we're cutting you off. New York City then took us to court, won in federal court. Yeah, but you didn't appeal won, it. Won in federal That's court. Right. 
We then have worked to try to get New York City out of the ocean. Let me tell you, we ought to get them out of the ocean. Well, we ought to get them out. Just like we pressure. We're applying all the pressure we've got. Frankly, the legislation that Senator Lautenberg's talking about, once and for all, let's make it clear in the federal law we're going to get them out. Let's pass it. Let's do that. I'm all for we're, it. We're in the process, and uh, I would have to say this, that uh, Mayor Koch said in 1979 that he could have us out of the ocean, uh, finish sludge dumping, by 1981. And here it is, now 1988, what they're proposing as a compromise is 1998. But uh, EPA wasn't there to... What about uh, the cities in New Jersey that are still done? Cities in New Jersey have to do the same thing there. No one is exempt from this. Listen, the ocean is tired. It's fatigued. Uh, they're throwing back at us what we're throwing in there. It's like force what, feeding let, an let animal. Let me ask you both, because we're running out of time, uh, for a thoughtful response to this, because we have a new administration coming up. This is clearly reaching critical proportions. E the environmental budget is one of the areas that can be cut in the uh, budget. Other areas have been put off limits. How much money, re realistically, are we going to have to spend as a society, and where is the money going to come from? You go first, uh, Mr. Leslie, Thomas. as far as oceans are concerned and the kind of problem we've got on our coast, you're talking about local government, state government, and federal government spending hundreds of billions of dollars. Where to put the kind of imp it's going to come from the tax base it's going to come from sewage and water treatment fees it's going to come from industrial polluters it's going to come from the same place we've put over a hundred billion dollars so far why haven't why haven't you been saying that in the budgets that that have been coming out of your administration Leslie, most of the money is not going to be federal budget money. Most of the money is going to be industrial money. It's going to be local government money. It's going to be the kind of sewage treatment plant upgrades that are required. Right. Those are the kind same. of places. Our the, budget is a part of it. Same and we question. have gotten increases Same question in our to Senator Lautenberg. Uh, we, we can't look to uh, local and state government to take care of that. Yes, to take care of the sewage uh, treatment uh, facilities, absolutely. They need help from the federal government, but this is a national problem. Uh, this is a tantamount to a military action. We have a fight to save a precious resource, and uh, we've got, we need help from the federal government. We need a president who's committed to it. I have a commitment from Mike Dukakis who said that when the next EPA administrator is appointed, he's going to consult me and other coastal state senators. We've never had that from, uh, from uh, President Reagan. We've never had a serious commitment to, the envi to cleaning up the environment. As a matter of fact, he's the one who uh, finally negotiated the end to uh, sewage right. treatment uh, monies. Commissioner. Administrator Thomas. You have a total commitment from this administration and from our agency to deal with coastal pollution and we're working on it. Massachusetts, don't talk to me about Massachusetts. If we hadn't, if we hadn't taken them into federal court, Boston Harbor would still be where it is today, the most polluted harbor in this country. Senator, last word. Well, the last word is that Senator Bradley and I and others wrote to Lee Thomas last October uh, pleading with him to get on with dealing with the infectious uh, and hospital waste problem. He said no, that he didn't have the authority, and we spend our time okay. fighting that battle. It's, it's unfair to, pass the, to pass, the, pass the blame over this way, I must tell you. Senator, thank you very much for okay. being our guest. Lee Thomas, thank you. We will be back with a short final word. Cartoonist Tom Toll shows us George Bush searching for a running mate in the Oval Office. I'm Leslie Stahl. Join us next week. We'll be reporting from the Republican Convention in New Orleans.